Okay, of all the things we could talk about right now, the Holy Spirit told me to do a review of past videos I've made about the Russian army and war with Russia. So in this particular vision, the Holy Spirit showed me a special, unique type of a, an artillery cannon. And this cannon was able to fire, I believe, way further than anyone would typically expect. The problem with a long-range artillery cannon is that when it fires, it vibrates, and that vibration is enough over an extended difference, say even just a few five, six miles, that it will not land where you wanted it to land. So you can fire once, and then you have to wait while the vibration uh, damps down. So then you can fire it again. So the, And this time in between shots is a minimum of one minute. So what I see is that these people had built a special device, and you can see the picture I've I drew here on this dry board, but actually in this in the smaller layer, the thinner layer, there actually were a, a large number of springs, and there may have even been a third layer. So the, the base layer from the ground was somewhat tall, and they had these huge springs there. So when this thing fired, this complex, carefully designed series of springs quickly dampened out the vibration and stabilized it so that it could fire again. So now you have a rapid fire, long range artillery piece, and anyone who's studied war knows that artillery is the, the deadliest thing on a battlefield. Most casualties, typically about two thirds of the casualties on a battlefield come from artillery, mortars, artillery, bombs dropped by air. Now, the next dream, so these, these dreams are I posted originally back in 2009. In this dream, uh, it starts off, there's like a, a line of conflict. There's some Americans and they are dug in. That's American infantry, soldiers, fighting men. And a Russian fighter plane uh, flies down low and strafes them. And quickly, two American Apache helicopters react. And one of them lines up directly behind this uh, Russian aircraft. And what happens is these little pods drop out of the back. Now, they're all contained like perfectly sphere, like an elongated, kind of like a soup can type of a shape. And the helicopter passes those in the air. And now what happens is there's a little pop, and one end of these cylinders pops open, and some chutes come out. The chutes grab the, the air, and they pull out some little small missiles. Now once those missiles are free of the tube, the parachutes come off, and the missiles fire up and they start looking for targets. And because this helicopter had already passed, he is hit. So I talk about that. And in the second scene, what happens is uh, an Air Force officer, he walks into the room and he sees the, a man who's heavily bandaged laying in the bed. And he says, you know, how are you doing? And the guy tells him, he says, well, you know, not great, but, I, you know, I'm doing all right. And he said, nobody would tell me anything. And the guy said, yeah, because I wanted to come in and I wanted to speak to you myself in person. And he says, you know, you were shot down, right? And the, guy, and the officer, I think, I think he realized that. But his very first question is, oh, what about my, my co-pilot? And the colonel says, I'm sorry, you know, he didn't make it. And then this pilot who's uh, very badly injured and has taken everything else in stride, now when he finds out that his friend has died, now he turns his head and weeps. So it was a, a tragic dream. So, but again, it's unique technology that these Russians had developed that they suddenly brought out on the battlefield, and apparently the American strategy in engaging the enemy didn't account for it. So it was a surprise. Uh, this dream was from 1994 or 1995. It's not on my YouTube channel. It's on my blog, dreamtraining.blogspot.com. And in this dream... Uh, the Russians have come in through the northern parts of California, and people are fleeing California, not with automobiles, but people are walking. So there are basically the standard thing that you might see on the news, refugees fleeing Yugoslavia, Bosnia-Herzegovina, some kind of a war in the Middle East, just a long line of people uh, t tugging along their belongings. And the next scene... Uh, we're in a, a port city, at Los Angeles is what I understood in the dream, and there are tent cities everywhere. People are being fed in soup kitchens, and they're paying for this in coins. Now in this dream, this is a, a vetted dream, not a fulfilled dream, but a vetted dream, meaning that uh, one portion of the dream was proven to have been prophetic, in that 
in this dream, I look down and I see all the coins and I say, well, I'm going to look at this carefully so that if I happen to see this in a dream in the past, uh, I will understand something. And so I have one quarter and this quarter is a normal looking quarter front and back. And I put it in the pile and I look at some people behind me and I say, listen, I'm going to swap these quarters. So just in case somebody gets angry at me, uh, you uh, vouch for me, okay? They say, sure, sure, sure. So I drop in one quarter and I take out one quarter. And as I do this, one of the people in the kitchen says, hey, did you take uh, some coins? And the people all vouch for me and say, no, 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 no. You know, he, he traded it even. So, but I'm looking at this coin and the back of the coin is different. It was not the type of a coin that we had in 1994. And it was only a few years after this dream that they began to make the state quarters where they changed the backs of the coins. So this dream is titled uh, The Secret Wealth of Russia because it actually shows two hidden wealths that they have. Now the first one is that in a bank they have this, these huge amounts, these huge reserves of gold and it's secret. In the, in the dream when I find this bank there's no label on the door. When you go inside even the hallways don't have any kind of labeling but inside this uh, Soviet city and the city was one that was built from scratch. I've since learned that uh, the city of, of St. Petersburg was completely designed from scratch. The location was chosen and they just they built it up from the ground. So this location where this gold is hidden is probably St. Petersburg. The other wealth is shown to be the actual Russians themselves, that they're quite hardy and quite strong. Their men are very strong. Uh, their women are very strong. Uh, for some reason, I didn't even show here, there was also another part about an old woman carrying a very heavy something, and it just showed that these are healthy, strong people. So they have this gold, and they have these people, and it's a wealth that most Westerners don't think about when they think about fighting a war against Russia and China. Now, in this other dream from March 18th, 2011, I had been praying. I was saying, Lord, show me something that I can tell to your people, that I can, that I can warn your people. So what I see is it's a multi-part dream. And in the first scene, uh, there's an officer, and I recognize by his uniform and his the unique uh, airborne pin of the Marines that this man is a Marine Corps officer and probably special forces. And But now he's working in some kind of an administration building and he receives a call and he takes the call on a secure line and there's a unique keypad that I described there. I've never seen one like it. And this man comes over, he says, hey, do you, do you know that scenario you're always talking about? And he says, yes, I do. He said, well, we just spotted it coming this way. So this guy runs out of that building where, where he was on the phone. He runs down this uh, open area and runs into another building because he needs to move fast on this information. So the next scene we see is, I, I see is this huge, massive deployment of people. Everybody's activated, everybody, even uh, ROTC, the Reserve Officer Training Corps, those young people are activated and everybody just becomes active duty. And I saw there was a, a TV commercial and they were condemning uh, any pacifists. And so they're saying, you know, hey, you know, these people are very brave. Look, some they're going to have to go to war. We don't even have enough uh, weapons and armor to fully equip everyone. So people are going to go to battle uh, under-equipped, but they are going. And the other thing that happens is uh, they move a bunch of heavy armor by air, and, and it's painted in desert cami. This deployment of armored vehicles results in a major defeat. And there's another dream that I've had where I also saw a major loss of armored equipment, tanks in particular, and this was a, a great setback. So then there's another scene. These young men are training. So they've gathered together and, and they're going to begin training and I see the thoughts of this one young man. So apparently the enemy is using some kind of a bomb, it detonates in the air and it distributes a huge amount of shrapnel and this shrapnel can pierce through metal buildings which is what they have to, to live in in this kind of a makeshift training camp where they are. So he's really worried about those bombs and getting killed. In the next scene there are some soldiers, uh, they're in a grassy area and this guy is telling them like listen you don't need any of your cash just give it all to me 
the guy gives his cash not in one lump sum, but first he gives $38, and then he goes into another portion of his wallet and he pulls out $15. Then I list here these three different uh, Job 38.15, Ezekiel, and Jeremiah 38.15. So, and then someone from YouTube had given me an excellent, a, a, a very good interpretation, and I've also included that there. I'm going to put links to all of these in the description. Let me get to these other ones. Okay, in this dream right here, I just kind of showed a bunch of different things that are going to come uh, against America in the future. Uh, there was also a, a dream about Australians. The UN soldiers ditched the Australians uh, in a major battle. Uh, the Russians were involved in that battle. In, in 96, I had a dream about 9-11. I had more than one dream and vision. One of the longest visions I've ever had in my life uh, proceeded was about uh, the attacks on September 11th. Anyway, this is also a very interesting dream. So I guess that the Russians attacking and fighting against Australians, that was a, a that was the reason I wanted to list that one. And I think there's one more. Okay, now the other one is, this isn't a dream, but this is something that I've seen. I made this three days ago. Since then, the last two days, the number of people warning about an engineered famine has suddenly multiplied, you know, exponentially. So in this video, I talk about how the Russians manufactured a famine to kill uh, millions and millions of Ukrainians and how those same exact tactics are suddenly re-emerging in the world uh, in basically every continent and in several and multiple different countries. And even today, I've seen new articles about they passed a new law saying that uh, fishing wasn't right and they even closed uh, open fish markets, open farmers markets in the United States. Some cities are passing these laws. So what are they doing? They're gaining control over the food supply. And this is going to help them engineer a food shortage. This is the man from Modesto reminding you as always to pray or be defeated.